Prish, more on that hospitality story shortly. But first, as you say, Scotland will have a new five level system from November the 2nd. The levels will go from zero to four, with zero being close to normality, four being close to a lockdown. And in level four, we learn today, much like Wales right now, uh, non-essential retail will have to shut, so likely hairdressers and clothes shops and so on. But Nicola Sturgeon said we wouldn't be going back to March and the intention is to keep schools open come what may. We don't have to take a one-size-fits-all approach if that is not warranted. It means that a part of the country with low rates of infection won't have to live with the same restrictions as a part of the country with much higher rates. And this approach also allows us, while retaining some flexibility, which we always need in the face of an infectious virus, uh, to give you a better idea of the restrictions that will apply at different levels. Well, decisions about which level each part of Scotland goes into will be made over the coming week. But three and a half million people across central Scotland are already under pretty severe restrictions. Initially, it was supposed to be for 16 days. That's been extended by another week. And it means that all the bars and restaurants around me here that would normally be busy are entirely shut. Uh, but how have the low paid workers been affected during this shutdown? We've heard allegations by some workers about two businesses, West Brewery and the Ivy restaurants famous, the famous Ivy restaurants outpost in Glasgow. Two weeks since many bars and restaurants in Scotland were forced to close. Here too there's been a row over emergency funding for business. But where has the shutdown left the lowest paid workers? Tonight, we can reveal some workers allege their pay was set to be massively reduced. We've been speaking to bar and restaurant workers who allege their employers are refusing to put them on the furlough scheme. And they claim it's dramatically reducing their wages. And one of the allegations is against a business synonymous with the rich and the wealthy. It is the Ivy. The Ivy in Glasgow is part of the restaurant group Caprice Holdings, reportedly valued last year at £800 million. I wanted to tell you what we, as a group of restaurants, are doing to support the community. Its owner, Richard Caring, says his businesses have donated tens of thousands of meals to those in need during the pandemic. Will we all be able to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, I helped, I supported, I cared. But we understand some workers at the Glasgow Ivy were initially told they wouldn't be furloughed during the current 16-day shutdown. We've seen a letter from the Ivy to some of its staff that says unless they use their holiday allowance, they'd be temporarily laid off. One worker, who asked us to alter his voice to protect his identity, tells us it would leave him earning next to nothing. So how much would you actually get from the Ivy over the whole two weeks? Potentially £150, 150 pounds as a maximum. I'm going to have to pick and choose and prioritise which bills to pay. Um, essentially, my rent is the, the main one. I don't think it's, it's possible to live on £75 a week. Our source claims if he wants anything like a salary, he'd have to cash in every single day of his annual leave and it still wouldn't cover the shutdown period, so we'd have to borrow leave from the company. Have you got all that annual leave to take, even no. if you wanted to? No, so I would be taking holidays that I've yet to earn. Um, so technically, if I was to leave the company for whatever reason, I would have to pay that money back. Eventually, be paying my, my own wage, uh, I'd put myself in a position of debt with the company. After we approached the Ivy with our allegations, they reversed course. Staff will now have the option of being furloughed. If the shutdown continues beyond November 1st, they'll use the new job retention scheme as they always intended. But the Ivy is not the only business where workers have raised this concern. This is the West Brewery and Beer Hall in Glasgow. We've heard from some staff here who tell us they'd initially been offered a choice during the 16-day shutdown. Use holiday pay, which one worker claims because of their contracts and the previous lockdown amounts to around one day's pay, or accept just eight hours a week in the warehouse on minimum wage. The staff straight away were, were very upset about it. Um, staff members were quick to point out that some staff members have families and, and, and people to care for, and eight hours a week is 
especially the minimum wage, is absolutely not enough. This minimum wage worker at West Beer Hall tells us it amounts to take home pay during the shutdown of barely £10 a day. Do you all feel looked after no, as employees? No, no, no not, not at all. Um, that's one of the big problems with, I think, hospitality um, in a kind of wider sense as well. It seems like the staff members are kind of uh, disposable, um, especially those minimum wage staffing, um, but they're not looked after whatsoever. When we put our allegations to West Brewery, they reversed their position too. They say since details of the emergency funding have been published, they've looked at all options and will now furlough their workers. It's a win for both sets of staff amid uncertainty about when this hospitality shutdown in Scotland will end. Well, joining me now is Sir Dave King, who was Chief Scientific Advisor to the Government until 2008 and chairs the Independent SAGE Group, which has been calling for uh, more severe restrictions. Um, Sir Dave, if the R rate is coming down, could that mean that England doesn't need the more severe restrictions that many on your group have been calling for? Absolutely not. When you say the R, R rate is coming down, we know that the R rate at the moment is 1.3. If, if we want to get this epidemic out of the way, we've got to bring it down well below one. Now, but, but let me just say, what is completely missing from the government strategy and from their advisors is the following notion. In order to bring an epidemic to an end, the people who have the disease, say 80%, must be isolated from the rest of the population so that the rest of the population can get on with their normal business. In order to achieve that, you have to be able to find and test and trace all of those people who've just gone down with the disease so that within 24 hours, you're isolating them and you're isolating all of their contacts. In order to achieve that, let me take Germany or Greece as an example where this was achieved many months ago. In order to achieve that, you need to operate at the local level so that, for example, in terms of trace, you don't just phone up somebody and say you should be self-isolated. You call them up and you find out what their problems are, whether they can self-isolate, whether they need help, and the government needs to see that the support is there. Now, let me just take you through what needs to be done. If we work at the local level, GPs who are feeling totally left out of this become engaged in the process, and so do the molecular virology labs. We've got 44 molecular vi virology labs around the country who are not being used for testing. We need to see that the lead is given back to NHS England. We've spent £12 billion since May, and we only got into this very late, this whole epidemic beginning in January. We started paying two companies without any healthcare experience to develop the test and trace system. But it has failed completely. Well, let's just come to what needs to be done then. I mean, if... If we don't have the test and trace system working as we need to, are we going to end up having to have a lockdown at a later stage, given the government is refusing to do it now? Well, we, we must have a lockdown as soon as possible. At the moment, we have 474 deaths per week reported in England in four weeks' time, because everyone who goes into hospital... Uh, sorry, who gets the disease today and goes into hospital because they need to in, in two weeks' time. And those who die will be dying in four weeks' time. That's the average. So we can say, even if we were to stop the disease in its tracks now, we will have 2,000 deaths in just four weeks' time. And that will keep multiplying as we go up. Now, the only alternative is to give it take it away from these private companies, give it to the GPs, the molecular virology labs, uh, give the NHS England the lead and see the top tier local authority officials, that is the directors of public health in all of the regions, take over control. If we did that within a few weeks, so introduce a lockdown right away, within a few weeks, we would have this whole thing capable of being tested and traced. So David, what we need... I'm sorry to cut you off, but we, we must leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for that.
Quick clarification before we go. Earlier, the former chief scientific advisor, Sir David King, said NHS England have been given £4 billion for test and trace. They've just told us the service is run by the government and this money has been allocated by them to the service. 